in you Your hope and pray That come the day you see that dream come true With every passing moment You begin to understand That you're bound for glory land In our country we say that we score in a soccer game when the ball leaks right into the goalposts. In the World Series, it is almost impossible to avoid this leaking. It will happen. Some outstanding eye doctors think that the same thing goes for the clear corneal incision. If you view the video, you'll notice that there's a spontaneous leak in this incision. Some incisions will leak with pressure and some spontaneously. And for that reason, I have employed closure as my rule. Yes, it does leak. But the clear corneal incision definitely has a learning curve. And as Paul Ernest has shown, is, is less stable, and particularly if you have a shorter tunnel. And I find it doesn't seal as immediately as a scleral tunnel incision, and I have to many times hydrate the, the edges and just wait a little bit, and there's some frustration to that as well. Yes, it does leak. The low pressure is suggesting that that wound is not intact. Even though we leave it intact at the time of surgery, the pressure goes down. And the bacteria of the conjunctiva may provide wound leaks, soft eyes, and the valves may be popped open with soft rubbing. Yes, it does leak. This is the corneal bevel, the stepped incision. Both three millimeters in width. Now here's a three millimeter limbal bevel, and we noticed that it took more external pressure to elicit a leak compared to the clear corneal bevel. And here's the hinged incision, half millimeter in the clear cornea, and again it took more external pressure to elicit a leak. Yes, it certainly leaks. Tearing down the goalposts is one way to avoid leakage. A sure way to avoid leakage once and for all is by blocking the goal. A few methods have also been used to avoid clear corneal leakage. But let's see how they work in rabbit eyes pressurized at 6 millimeters of mercury. We will measure the necessary force to cause leakage applied in the posterior lip of the clear corneal incision 50 minutes after it has been done. The first incision to be tested will be the original fine stab clear corneal, 3.2 millimeters wide and 2 millimeters long, hydrated by saline solution. As you can see, the swelling is much too great, but notice that at the moment that the dynamometry is performed, 50 minutes after the incision, the swelling is all gone, and with a slight touch of the dynamometer tip, less than 5 grams, the incision will open up. Yes, it does leak. Now let's test the hinged incision, also done with 3.2 millimeters wide and 2.0 millimeters long. A test done 50 minutes later showed that it opened at about 12 grams. Sometimes it takes longer, but it still leaks. The square suture done in a one-step clear corneal incision, as proposed by Mesquite, really makes the incision more resistant, but at 40 grams of pressure in the posterior lip, there was a small leakage too. It's more difficult, but it still leaks. Now let's try to block the goal. 
Let's apply an organic glue in a similar clear corneal opening as Fine's original stab incision. 50 minutes after cutting off the excess glue, we will put pressure in the posterior lip. In the first attempt, you will see that at 90 grams of pressure, the incision will still be closed. In the second attempt, you will see that it is going to reach 120 grams on the dynamometer and the tip even skids off, but there was no leakage. In the third attempt, we use maximum pressure on the dynamometer, up to 200 grams. And even so, you will see that the incision will not open. It is almost unbelievable that this is the same eye opened 15 minutes earlier. It won't leak. We don't like soccer. And what is this glue all about? The concept of using clotting substances from human blood for wound management can be traced to 1909 when Virgil developed a fibrin sealant. Today, fibrin sealants may be found in Europe with the name of Tissel. The same product in South America is named Tissacol. Ellen Roberts in England developed a new product named Indermill. Anyway, we cannot use these products. They are not FDA approved. Well, maybe there is a solution. The organic glues are made of two components. One is the thrombin and the other is the fibrinogen. In the U.S., you already have the thrombin in the market named thrombostat and thrombinar. The second component, the fibrinogen, can be obtained from your patient's own blood. After harvesting the blood from the patient, it is placed in a refrigerated centrifuge to separate the cell from the plasma. This plasma will then be frozen. After freezing it at minus 18 degrees centigrade, it will be defrosted up to 4 degrees centigrade in a refrigerator. As this happens, you will see the cryoprecipitates mixed in the plasma. The bag with the cryo is again centrifuged at low temperatures, 0 degrees centigrade, to separate the cryoprecipitates and the plasma. Afterwards, the bag is placed in the plasma extractor, which by pressure will make the overlying plasma go to another bag. The remaining cotton wool-like substance is factor 1, fibrinogen, and factor 8, concentrated. And this is the second organic glue component. Any blood bank could do this at any amount desired. I already have an experience of more than 500 cases of clear corneal incisions sealed by organic glue. All of these cases have been done with Fine's original stab incision. A safe application of the glue can be achieved with this drop-by-drop -drop glue delivery system. The air in the anterior chamber will show any undesired penetration of glue in the eye. The glue application will only take a few seconds. With the fibrin sealant, the clear corneal incision won't leak, even with pressure up to 200 grams. It is just like blocking the gall. It won't leak. It won't leak. Mamma mia, não vaza!